So, just um, I've come across non-duality a few months ago only, um, and I'm very surprised because that this even is a thing that is talked about, as it were, because it, and it echoes a lot of experiences or inner learning, I would call it, or, or just of things that I've never really talked about. So suddenly hearing talks and stuff is just it's amazing. And obviously it takes a little bit of getting used to the language that's being used. And so, for example, something like witnessing and um, the witnesser, I understand the, and have had the experience of there not being a sense of a person and the, the, the consciousness that is kind of, I guess, the fabric of everything that's how I would describe my, my how I've experienced it. But if there is a, a witnessing happening, isn't then there also something that's being witnessed? Yeah. So, yeah. so really, the teacher. I mean, the thing the thing is, is I don't know who you got that word from witnessing, like um, who you've been listening to. I must I must have heard it in at least two or three different people. One of them would have been Rupert Spira an Italian um, lady and uh, like Rupert Spira says very clearly that it's like a, a, a first stage yeah yeah but yes then I guess there are others who, who don't elaborate from that yeah and it still has value doesn't it I mean it, to, to talk in that way but um, yeah it, I guess it's maybe it's just a the words that's been used, it's just a mental yeah. approach. Maybe. Totally, totally, because even if you say consciousness, it becomes divided, even you're conscious of something. So it is, yeah. it is incorrect way of speaking, but it's also so, so impossible to speak about. And especially when you're speaking to lots of people at once, because sometimes people don't even have languages. Like once I gave a talk and the group of people I gave a talk to didn't even know that they were thinking. They just didn't know that. They just didn't have, they knew they were thinking as in like, they could work out that like one, they know that they think when they do mathematics, like so they know they think when they turn the computer on, but they didn't know they were thinking, I am angry with that person. They'd never had that information because when I got into the subject, I was so young, I'd completely forgotten that people didn't, that a lot, majority of society don't even have that space. They don't even have the space to think, I am angry with someone is thinking like I am angry with that person how dare they treat me they're also having an emotional reaction but they're also thinking it but they don't have the ability to see that they think and they believe that's a fact and that's what everybody else thinks and that's like a fact that's come from the outside that's like the way it is and yeah. and so when you're speaking about this subject especially in groups if you're if if you're you're doing a live talk to groups and say it's people that aren't used to the way you speak, you have to have some reference points because otherwise it's like, so what happened with this group when I didn't realize that they didn't know they could think, they, that they thought, they actually turned on me and they got really like angry. They were like, how dare you say that's a thought? And it was actually my friend that was watching that when we were in the interval, they, they informed me that, um, that the audience, because they weren't used to non-duality, they weren't, or this subject, they didn't have any awareness of it. So if I went into a talk, which has happened before, and I went in and spoke absolute, as absolute as I could about non-duality, because the absolute would be something like, this is emptiness appearing as fullness. And and, and like imagine if you just went to like your mother or your father or your aunt and your uncle like and you said that it's like an impossible ability to to start a conversation so there has to be a start, starting point for everybody like when I started I started off with meditation and the idea of being in the moment and and that and then after I began to get used to those ideas it was like my mind settled down to hear to hear other stuff and then eventually the mind settles down with all because suffering or the illusion comes not from um, not knowing something it comes from knowing too much so as the mind settles down on its ideas okay. 
Can, can you just say that again? The, the illusion doesn't come okay. from, um, from not knowing something, from not having a piece of information. The suffering comes, the illusion comes from knowing too much. How, how do you figure that? Like how, well, how you when you that? were born, were you identified? Mm. And you had no thoughts. You knew exactly who you were. You were perfectly home. You're pure being, at its purest. And then, so as you grew, or whatever is put onto you. Too, yeah. So then, so consciousness knows who it is. Even now, in this conversation, consciousness is free, or beingness is free. But then, what exists in that is a character that believes it's somebody, and it's taken all these ideas and like sucked it like a vacuum into itself and made an identity. And you, then most people get more and more unhappy as they age as a separate entity because they take on more and more ideas, yeah. and those ideas create problems in their life. So actually, this subject isn't about learning new things. So it's about it's kind of it's this letting go. Of all the attachment to what you do know, and it's not becoming like um, having Alzheimer's. It's still the shift that happens is a shift beyond that. It's like uh, the end of attachment to all the ideas. It's seeing that the ideas are just ideas, like the wind is the wind and the clouds are the clouds, and they're not actually who you are, and they're not speaking about you. There's yeah, like the end of putting them into who you are. Yeah. So. So as the mind or that energy that's believing you are those thoughts relax more and more, then then this subject can be heard beyond your thoughts. So it's like at first when I was super identified, just sitting and meditating was really hard. Listening to, you know, like a Buddhist sutra was really hard because my mind was so occupied with myself and with my life and with my worries and my problems. And then... Yeah. As I began to get into the subject more and more, my mind began to relax, but it's never my mind that's going to get it, it's that which is beyond the mind. But as the mind began to relax, then this other possibility could be heard. So the, the consciousness or the witnessing is just, like Rupert says, is a stage. And this relaxes the personality structure, it's actually not the non-dual message. You can't speak about yeah. the non-dual message. Okay, yeah. So, okay. The, the, what I found interesting, the reason I, I sort of caught on to the word witnessing is that the, um, this is okay, can I just say something quickly about it? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, is that the dissolution of, like, the, this Italian lady, Caterina Maggi, I don't know if. Yeah, you yeah, know. I do know her. And um, she um, said something like that the that suffering dissolves in the mere witnessing of it, that there's not, it was a beautiful way of putting it, I can't yeah. remember exactly, but that there's a, like there's a, um, you don't need to try and solve the puzzle, you just need to see that there's no one there who actually has the yeah. puzzle or the problem or whatever. But that's, um, that's, that's more, the, yeah, carry on. For, like my personal experience has been, when I was, uh, about 20 years ago, I, I got into spirituality very briefly and quite extremely like I was so zealous about it like ascetic let's say yeah trying to trying to be really good at it whatever and fortunately for me that burned out very quickly yeah then um, I came the only thing that kind of remained of value and that, that kind of guided me through just to my feelings was some things that Lao like Lao Tzu in, in the sense that you were just talking about, like that it's not about adding something, but taking away the yeah. kind of turning to the uncarved block, is the yeah. way you put it. Yeah. And so for me, there's been there's been a certain amount of activity in that. Yeah. Um. So, like, if I have a problem, I I'll try and face it as much as I can. Yeah. To the heart of it, and then I'll always find something. Like I find a phrase or I find a self image that I've put onto myself, and then I need to then I that can fall away yeah but the, the witnessing is, is feels almost like a more relaxed state than that there's no it doesn't have to be this active inquiry there's just a a, a witnessing of suffering by looking at it clearly it kind of dissolves in the gaze if you see, if you see what I'm saying yeah yeah 
um, rather than for me, it's more like a, it's kind of an act, been, been an active sort of introspection at every turn, um, creating a certain amount of difficulties, really. Yeah. Um, like, oh, yeah. But I guess like non-duality is not saying that there's nothing to do, right? Um, I don't know of anyone that says that. No. Yeah. Okay. But that's Again, normally that's, a misinterpretation. Yeah. So, so normally, um, when people hear that that there is nobody that does anything because there is nobody, then they p take that on the personal level and think yes. I've got to not do anything. So I don't actually know anyone that does say that. But I think it's like the biggest thing that 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 um, seekers hold on to. I don't have to do anything. Like, yeah. like I think. Um, that's to do with the personality structure. With the bringing it to light, the way that I would see it is maybe slightly differently from Maggie, but you have to just work out what, um, I think her name is actually Shakti, but um, yes. yeah, so it, um, uh, I, the way I would see it is that on the personality structure, the personality structure has built up lots of false ideas from this, ver this illusion that you are separate and it's been passed to you from your parents genetically and through society yeah. and there's yeah. there's been this building up of like an idea one idea you could take is that it's somebody's fault ultimately it's nobody's fault it's not the fault of the wind that the wind blows or that the sun shines and and yeah. and creates a drought it's nobody's fault ultimately yeah. that's not saying on the human level that the human doesn't have boundaries and that the human doesn't say no and doesn't put responsibility if somebody crashes into your car on someone but it's it's um it's it's seeing that on the absolute level there's nobody that ever did anything to you and there's nothing that you've ever done to someone else there's been a movement of energy happening on the personal level um sometimes the person has built up some very contradictory and difficult ideas to listen to and so there has to be a relaxing of that. Yeah. And I found on the personal level, the way that relaxes is like what Shakti says, is in you just need to, to see it. Like, so yeah. you just need to, to bring it into consciousness. Now there's two different, two different things that happen in that. So who is it that sees it? So ultimately it's consciousness that sees everything. It's see, it, the, the person doesn't see anything, but the person moves the personal attention. So right now, say if you had an unconscious thought about me that was hateful to me, but you weren't conscious of it, and I pointed it out to you and I said, I said, just look at the way that you're feeling towards me now. So what's your body saying? And then you recognized that you, you disliked me because I reminded you of your mother or I reminded you of your father or I reminded you of something that you really dislike, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Now, just from the recognition of that, you're not going to then spend ages trying to get revenge at me trying to attack me or, or trying to do all these things that happen when you're unconscious about it it's seen for what it is so it's brought up into the light and it just will begin to dissipate nothing more needs to be done and and in future when it comes up you'll see the feeling you'll allow the feeling to be there but you won't think it's actually me and you won't spend ages trying to 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 get something out of me there will just be a recognition for what it is and this is how the human on the personal level begins to change and the personal when that human begins to change on the personal level there's a relaxing of that personality and then there is there can be this seeing of that which is beyond the person when you're totally identified and you're totally involved with hating this person or hating that person, you don't even recognize that you hate it. You're just seeking to get to the end of that in time and you're just lost in thoughts and uncomfortable feelings. Yeah. So, so this is a difficult thing talking about the moving of the personal attention onto things and bring it into light because ultimately everything is seen, the conscious and the unconscious by consciousness like everything, because everything's experienced by consciousness. But I feel that what has to happen on the personal level is the personal attention, so your attention has to see things that are unconscious and brought up into the light. Yes. But it's not like consciousness can do that because consciousness can't 
doesn't have personal attention consciousness is just witnessing or just okay. watching everything that's it okay perfect yeah that's, and most probably that's, that's what shakti says but maybe in that video she was speaking about something else and it's like yeah. it's hard, hard when you listen to lots of different speakers and maybe she didn't mean that maybe she meant something different but no, this that, is that's very helpful yeah yeah it's awesome yeah Thank you very much. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you for your question. Okay. <laughs> That's enough. Bye. Bye.